Hi YouTube friends, it's Victoria from Victoria Makes. Today, I'm going to upcycle this. I found it in the charity shop and it's not in bad condition actually. It's a windbreaker, but if you know me, I don't like things just plain and easy. So, I've got some paint pots, little uh, sample pots, and I thought what we'll do is we'll take it apart and first of all, we will paint the wood. To how I like it, so you can upcycle them. And um, if uh, this is in quite decent repair, actually, I'm quite surprised. I've been looking for ages for some posts, and I went to the charity shop and I said, I could have it for two pounds, so I was really, really pleased. Um, I would have paid like two pounds just for the sticks. I think these brand new are about 20 pounds, but let's have a little look. So, off with bed. And it's plastic, which is waterproof, which is, would be good. But I'm going to use some of my fabric stash and make it into a customised embrace. I'm going to do a series of videos getting beach ready for this year and making your own things to take to the beach. So, upcycling and making your own windbreakers. A nice sort of cushion and a towel backed with fabric and fabric lined picnic basket. So I hope you'll join me. We're going to make some seaside theme bunting as well. So we could really, really jazz up the beach when we go uh, and have our beach days out. If you've got a camper van as well, you could also use some of these ideas and tricks to jazz up your camper van. Ideas from making things like cushions, bunting for the camper van, maybe some curtains as well made out of tablecloths or patchwork. It's so all sorts of ideas to get crafty and make your space a personal space. So I hope you'll join me and let's upcycle this windbreaker. So this windbreaker has got one, two, three, four, five sticks. It's quite a long one, I don't know how long it is, but generally speaking, each post, I think we've got about a little lot. I would say that's three quarters of a meat in between. So we need quite a lot of fabric, and that's fine. As you know, I've got plenty of that. <laughs> so I'm going to take the sticks out, and I'm going to use the existing plastic for a reference of how material we need, and where the divisions are, to make it equal. Because if you do that, then it should be protected from the wind. So I'm sure these uh, ready-made items have been tested out and they know how wide each post should be, you know, so it doesn't actually get blown over, etc. So I'm going to keep this because this is such a, a useful pattern guide for me. Okay, so put that to one side and then we'll choose some fabric like that. I'll give these a quick wipe down and then we'll get painting them. Right guys, so we've, we've wiped these down. Still obviously stained with the uh, sand, but that's fine, they're all dry now. So I've got some uh, paint sample pots, and these are uh, pots of paint that I've bought, obviously samples when I'm doing the house, and basically I keep them obviously behind for other projects, and they're really good. It's really worth buying uh, sample pots when you are painting your home, because you can never get really a true indication of the paint colour on the paint chart. And sometimes, obviously, with the lighting in each room, a particular colour might not be good in your room if you're north facing or south facing, etc. You know, the light levels are different. So, I always buy sample pots and then I get the actual right shade that I want at the end of the day without paying £55 and being very, very upset with my pot of paint. So, these are good because then I use them as craft as well. So, it's all you know, saving money. So that's my paint colour. So I'm going to go with um, these, which are kind of like a grey, kind of greeny blue. I'll show you. And that's because of the fabric that I've got. You know, I'm trying to find stuff that A, I like, and B, that will match the fabric that I'm putting on. And I'm going to do it in um, two fabrics. And the reason being, because then it will coordinate with all the accessories that I'm going to make as well. So I'm just opening the pots of paint now. And I'll show you. So this one is like a, a, a grey blue, a little bit like a duck egg blue and this one is more like a grey green, a little bit like a greyer sage green. And um, This is L trailing plant 
and this one is Ferran Ball Light Blue number 22. It's lovely in a dining room or any other room, you know, obviously. It's beautiful colour. Right, so I'm going to paint these. I've got, as I said, five, so I'm going to alternate them. And I'll just show you the fabric that I've chosen to go with this. So I've gone for a traditional striped fabric. I don't know if the colours will come true on this, but this is like that lovely sagey kind of fawn colour with a bit of grey green in it. And then we've got like a, a rusticy red, like a, a washed down burgundy, and then a blue on a cream. It tastes a bit like a ticking, isn't it? And it's a nice linen thick fabric. So I've gone with that. And I'm also going to introduce some of this as well in with it. Okay, because it's got the same sort of colourings. You've got your, your browns and your creams and like ready tinges, which kind of go. And I thought that'll give it a little bit of a contrast as well. And then I can actually utilise this fabric, what I've got, and this fabric and make a lot of more accessories and they'll all tie in together so I get, get a uniform look at the end of the day. Obviously choose the fabric and the colours of your choice, but the same principle applies. So let's get started painting these holes. Right then, so I've lined my table with a bit of paper to protect it and we'll start with two paintbrushes and just basically start painting these poles. And we'll start from the top because we've got little black pieces of rubber around the, the top, so I'm going to just go very, very carefully around the top. You could use some masking tape as well, and you can also just wipe it off if you go over. Just use your paint and just paint the poles in the colour of your choice. You could leave them plain if you so wish, but as I've got this paint, I thought well, I might as well use it. What I'm going to do is just paint one half, lay them down so that it doesn't stick to the paper, and then I'll turn them around after and then I shall come back and show you what they look like when they're dry. All is going on there guys, I'm just doing as I say half of it and then I'll turn it around when this half dry. But I'm really pleased how it's looking, much better than just plain. And you know obviously when you get to the beach and the wind and everything it'll probably sort of start chipping off and it'll be quite a rustic look at the end of the day so that's what you're going for. I'm going to probably put two coats of paint on so it'll give it a good thickness, really brown very fast. And then the other two I'm going to do it in very similar but it's more like a duck head blue for my farron ball. Right guys, while I'm waiting for these to dry, I've decided to paint my basket as well because what I'm going to do is I'm going to line this with some of the fabric as well to match the windbreakers. And this could be a nice little basket to take your drinks and things to the beach. So what I've done is I've just done a line all the way around of the blue, which will match this, and then a darker blue I've used at the top just for a little bit of contrast. It may need two colours because what you, fa you might find that is the wood, the colour, the sort of brown might bleed through, but we'll see how we go with it. I have done it before and it depends on the thickness of the paint, so we'll have to see what it's like. But I've just literally gone over it with the paint to match the windbreaker. You can do it all one colour, but I do like a contrast. So I've done like a darker blue. This is Oval Blue by Farron Ball. And um, this one is the one that I've used on the windbreaker, which is light blue number 22. I'm going to let it dry now. And what we'll do is we'll line that with some other fabric on another video to show you and pull it all together. We might do a few more sewing projects as well. Unfortunately, I found that my sewing needle foot, the runner that feeds the fabric and material through, has fallen down, so I need to do a bit of work and get that mended. Hopefully I can fix that, and then I'll carry on with my sewing projects and come back to those, but in a minute, I've not been able to do it. So just getting on with the painting today, and then we'll measure out that fabric and, and pin it all up and make sure that we can get that sewn as soon as possible when I get my sewing machine fixed. <laughs> uh, so uh, there's always a few complications and, and things that uh, delays, isn't there, guys? But so is life. So yeah, so I'm just waiting for this to dry and then I'll give it a second coat on the, lip, on the wooden uh, poles and I'll also do the back of it, obviously do it on one side and then we're halfway there then, then comes the fun bit, the measuring out of the fabric and the sewing of the fabric for the windbreaker. Right guys, so I'm just going to show you the poles and then I'm going to leave them to dry and then I'll come back probably tomorrow and we'll carry on with the project for the windbreakers. So here's the windbreakers. So we've got 
one, two and three painted and then this, you can't really tell much difference actually in the shades but we've got five in total all painted up and we're going to leave them to dry now and then we'll come back again and we'll sort out the next stage and the basket is drying off nicely now and I'm really enjoying the coordinating colours it reminds me of like 1940s and 1950s style basket where they used to paint them and braid them so I'm quite pleased with that as well and then I've put the fabric all in a pile so we'll come back to that another day Hi friends, so we're carrying on with our windbreaker project today and I've painted up the poles as I said and I'll show you how they've dried one note about that, because I use Farron Ball and Little Green paint, that is an interior paint. So I would advise that you either wax off the poles with outdoor wax or spray it with some kind of varnish to protect it. Because obviously it's going to be outdoors and it may have moisture, etc. We don't want the paint to reactivate with water. And then come up on the fabric in, in time. So always coat the paint on the poles with some outdoor protection i.e. varnish as I said or some outdoor wax. Let me show you where we are up to at the moment. Right so I've got the poles and as you remember I painted them in five the five poles in different colours two and three so three in one colour and two in the other. Quite honestly you can't really tell the difference is just a slight hint of the green and a slight hint of grey blue so not much difference anyway but I'm going to coat those as I say I'll do that later guys because I've not done it yet but I advised you to do that but I just wanted to show you how nice it come out. I'm really pleased with it, better than just a plain pie. Now for the fabric, so this is the original one, plastic cover which is very nice and serviceable. I want to do a range of fabric accessories for the beach and I want them coordinating so I found this lovely fabric that I've had for a long time and it's like a ticking and I think it's like a great deck chair and windbreaker and beach fabric and I'm going to marry it up with this one as well which is a floral. I'll do a couple of the panels in this and then the rest in this and then I'll be able to mix and match them on the other projects that I'm going to do as well. So how much fabric do we need? Well we need to measure out the original don't we? So we'll get, we'll get this on the surface and we'll measure it. We need to allow extra for the actual loops that we need and measure those so we've got the right width for the loops to go through. So we'll add that on as well. Right, so let's measure. And as I say, fortunately we've got this original one which is lovely. It gives us a great base. That's got five inches on that loop. Okay, all the way around. So we need to add five more inches for the loop. And I usually draw this on a piece of paper so I get the plan right. So I would advise you get a book and draw it out. And then you won't slip up. Five inches, and that's to make the loop. And then we're measuring from the seam where the loop is to the next seam and pull it out. That is 31 and a half inches and again we'll do a five inch loop and I'm sure it will be exactly the same we'll do the other one and then we can just add it up. Well, let's see never presume because that one this next one isn't the same this next one is 28 the loop will be the same because the sticks are the same so we've got five inches there. Show you didn't it you can't just presume and it's 29 inches right well I'll do 28 so I like this in order Oh, this is the 31 inches and it's the same. No? <laughs> they are cheaply made, aren't they? But I'm going to do the last one the same as this. So I've got five inches there then. And then this last one I'm going to do 31. I think I'll, ju I'll just do it as 31 inches for the first one, 28 for the second, 28 for the third, 31 for the fourth panel, and then another five on the end. And then hopefully it'll all be equal. Now what you do then folks, so you've got your panels then, 5 inches for that loop, 31 for the first panel, 5 inches for the pole loop, 28 for the next, 5 inches for the next pole loop, 28 for that, 5 inches for the next pole loop, 31 inches and 5 inches for the end 
add all those up and that will be how much you need to have in your fabric. Now as for the hives, you could do, you know, a shorter one or a taller one, it really depends. Now this is just plastic, so I am just going to allow for seam allowance to turn them back as well. Now this is 33 inches depth. Now let's see how deep these poles are. I'm going to measure this stick and just see how high it would be on there. Because if you want a higher one, you can always have it a bit higher. You need to allow for the stick to go in the sand, of course. But we could get up to 35 inches in total, really. I'm going to go on this one because they've made it. And you would hope that they've made it from a pattern which works. So this is 33 inches. I'm going to give myself um, a bit extra on the top and the bottom as well um, for seam allowance. And I think what I will do, a nice deep one so I can get it sewn properly so there'll be no frame, etc. So we want plus we want three inches on the top seam plus three inches on the bottom seam. And it's 33 inches from there. There. So that will be 33, 36, 39 inches deep. Add it all up. So we've got 39 inches now, and then we're going to add all these up. So that's 5, 31, that's 36, and 5 is 41, and 2, that's 61, 69, and 5, 74, and 28, 94, 102, and 507, and 31, 138 and 543 inches in total. But as I said to you, I'm not going to do the same fabric for the whole of the windbreaker. I could do, but I don't want to. I want to give myself the opportunity to coordinate different things together. So I, if I introduce new patterns, I can then make more things as time goes on and keep adding to it. So that's your the amount of fabric that I will require. Obviously, do it all in stages, measure up the poles, measure your depth of the fabric that you want and measure the panels and allow for the pole seams so that the poles can go through those loops. And then you've got your total fabric required. So you know if you're going to have two alternate it, so you've got one, two, three, four panels which is easy, so you could do an alternating design couldn't you and that would work really well. So I'm going to measure out my fabric and I've done the maths. Right, well the beauty of using fabric with stripes is when you've actually measured it you can cut on the stripe and that makes it really much easier. I recently bought a rotary cutter and a self-healing cutting board so I can actually mark my fabric and cut straight because I found that quite difficult in the past. Cutting in stripes, that makes it really easy. So the first one I'm going to also allow for the fact that I'm joining two fabrics together now so I will need to have a little bit of an allowance on that seam edge where the poles fit, won't I? So what I thought was, I'll, I'll do the five inch, I'll add five inch and the 31 inch, and then what I'll do is I'll equally split this next five inch between the stripy fabric and the floral fabric, because I'm going to cut it there, aren't I? If you're doing all the same fabric, then you won't need to do that. So my first stripe will be five plus 31 plus two and a half inches. So that's 36, 38 and a half inches wide. All right, so I've worked it out. So my first strip's going to be 38 and a half inches wide, five plus the 31 plus half of that, which is two and a half. So that'll be 38 inch and a half inches wide. The second strip will be the two and a half inches left there, plus my 28 inch panel, and then two and a half inches of the loop. Then obviously the third strip again will be the two and a half inches of the loop plus 28 inches for the panel and two and a half inches for half of the loop. And then the fourth strip, two and a half inches plus the 31 inches plus the whole of the five for the end. Again, 38 and a half inches. So these two, the first and the fourth are the same. The second and the third are the same measurements. Okay, so always plan it out before you start cutting out your fabric. If you're doing it all the same, then obviously you just have this measurement, but as I'm having it 
coordinating now. I've worked it out how much I'd need. Okay, so I've already established the depth of this fabric and now I'm going to do 38 in, in a half inches wide. So I'll measure that off. And I want to do it from the top and from the bottom. Nice thick fabric this and it will be washable so the good thing about these is you can take them off if they get dirty. First panel, and a half. It's nearly a square panel actually. Yes, it's pretty much a square panel. 38 and a half by just nearly 39. Make sure when you're doing it, you get your, your straps the right way around. Keep it uniform when you come to uh, sew it up. Right, so that's the next panel I've just put out. I'm doing two panels of each design, as I said before. Right, so I've got two of the patterned fabrics cut out now, and two of the striped fabrics cut out. And what we need to do now is the top and the bottom, we need to turn it under, pin it, and sew it. So the raw edges are taken care of. Pin your fabric about three quarters of an inch, and turn it over so it's double. We can do the top and the bottom, all four pieces on a running stitch and then we'll go to the next stage. Right guys, so I've got my first panel here, that's a stripe. We're going to have the stripes going across. Then we've got one of our floral panels and what we need to do is, like I said before, we need to turn the top over and make a seam on the top and the bottom and run them both on the same machine. And then what we need to do is join them together and make that loop. Put them together. First of all, I'm going to just sew the two edges together and then I will sew in further few inches to make that tube that we need to put the pole through. And then I will sew this one onto the stripe like so, so that will be joined, that. And then the other one, the floral on the end, like so. So it'll be stripe floral, stripe floral. I'm going to get the sewing machine out now and get sewn up. So the top and the bottom seams, sew those first. Then we're going to join the upright panels together and then we're going to make the tubes to put the poles in. Then we will finish the edges into the loop and put the poles down the, the edges as well and it should be done. Right friends, just having a little break with a nice cappuccino and I'm setting up my sewing machine. So please wish me luck because this foot fell down into the main body of the machine um, last week and I've tried to take it all apart and hopefully I've fixed it and we'll see when I start to sew, won't we? So wish me luck. What we're going to do now is get it all threaded up and then start sewing the seams. So I've got a problem guys. What happens is I start sewing and then the sewing machine jams and not quite sure what it is because as I said before there was a problem with the footer you know the feeder of the fabric but I rectified that by taking it all apart and I realized that there was a little uh, quite a complicated pushing and shoving and trying to get a bar behind this section on this foot plate but I've done that so it seems to be holding up that okay but when I put everything back and put the cotton in it seems to be okay and then I start sewing and then it jams. I can't do this project today without sorting this little problem out you see so these things usually are very simple to rectify if you know how and so what I'm going to do is have a little look on the internet this was the the bar and this little bit here in here that forced this plate up and holds that and that's the feeder for the the fabric but it seems to be when it actually sews this section and the needle goes in and it actually gets jammed so I've checked all my tension and everything like that as normal um, but I cannot for the life of me understand what's happening something's not happy and the tension I've tried it on two and three you know to give it a, um, a, a big stitch and there's nothing jamming the cotton you know everything's as it should be so I'm not quite sure so I'm gonna have to sort this problem out and I have to come back to you another day when I can carry on sewing 
but it's very frustrating. So uh, hopefully I'll be back with you when my sewing machine is mended. <laughs> okay guys, sorry about this interruption. Right guys, so I seem to have fixed the problem. The wonderful YouTube with some nice troubleshooting guides on the sewing machines and I've taken it all apart and put it back together and hopefully we're away. Right, so we'll get all these seams sewn up. The machine is behaving nicely now. Use the edge of your fabric as a guide. That's lovely. A few little bits that need pulling out from the stitches that were unpicked a minute ago. But that and that is nice and neat. Pick all these bits out in a minute. Right, now we've got all the tops and the bottoms sewn. We're going to make the end loop for the pole to go through. So first of all, on the wrong side, we need to fold over the fabric and sew that edge down to make a neat edge. And then we will then fold that over again and secure it onto the fabric and make it wide enough for that pole to be fitted in and sew it down with a secure running stitch. So I'm going to take the selfage edge over and then run that stitch down and secure it first and then I will fold it over and we said five inches all together to make a loop and then sew that edge down once more and it will then hopefully look like that and have a little hole and then you'll put your hole through that okay we don't want it too loose otherwise all the fabric will just fall down the pole but you also want it with a slight excess so you can get the pole in and out and wash your fabric so you need to do that on both edges on the left hand edge and the right hand edge so i'm going to do that now Right guys, so what we're going to do now to get it together and the question is how do we do this so that we don't see any mess of joins on either the front or the back. So what I'm doing is I'm putting the right sides together, okay? So this is the top with the neat edges on top. The underside is here and here. So I've just put both sides together and I'm going to sew down here first of all okay then that will look really messy wouldn't it on the front but then what we're going to do after that is we're going to fold these sides in on themselves to make the loop thus hiding this edge on both the front and the back so let's say this is sewn already okay and we've got that then what we'll do is we will take that raw edge and we will fold it over twice once and then a second time like so and we'll make ourselves a nice little tube with that and we'll put the hole in and at the back all you'll see is the running stitch of a join and no raw edge and on the front you'll just see a nice smooth side and the pole will go in the middle so then you'll hide all that horrible edge okay and we'll do that with all the inner edges okay so i'm going to do that and i'll show you the next stage shortly right guys so what i've done is i put the pole in okay put the wrong sides on the top and i've pinned where the pole is all the way down so on the wrong side you'll see just the, the nice material on the right side you will then after sewing 
you'll see just the material. So all that selfage, selfage will be hidden inside, out of the way. And I've pinned it over the pole so we know that it will fit nicely when we put the pin, uh, the pole back in. I'm going to do that with all the poles. I'm going to just sew them now. I want to do that with each one. Mark on a piece of with a piece of paper the top edge so that I put the left hand side end. So I already know that that is going to fit my pole. That's the first one, and then I've come to the second one here, and I'll go along then, and I know exactly where I've started. So hopefully I won't be upside down or back to front, which is easy to do. Okay, right. So going to the third panel now, guys. And when we sit, and we'll sew that. And then we'll start looping it back over on itself with the pole in, pin it and then sew it together. Then we'll put our last panel on that end and carry on and do the same again. So just about to sew it up now. So we're going to now sew along the pinned lines which will enable us to give it enough room for the poles to slide in and out. This needs to be removable so we can wash it as well. I'm also going to spray this with fabric stain spray. Bought that off Amazon and that waterproofs fabric as well. And it'll help, help with stains as well. I hope it inspires you to do the same. So we can see now, I'm going to pull it out. It's all together and you've got your loop your pole and the raw edges are tucked neatly inside of the loop. We've just got one more to do. We've got our end loop, a second loop, our third pole loop and then this one is our raw edge now and we're going to do that shortly as well. Right guys, so I've got all, the, just putting all the poles in now into each section. I've got the first section and then one more in, second section. Then just trying to make them all even and then that last section. So we've got the first section here which then joins the floral section. And then we've got the next stripy section, that's the third one, which then joins up to the last floral one. So all the fabric now is through the poles. Ready to go to the beach? But I hope you agree that for a windbreaker, it's a really good design. Just see if I can bring it against the wall for you for now. Mm -hmm.